Task Force Pineapple. I pray that we get more information about this as quickly as it is safe to get because I will never forget it and we will tell our kids and grandkids the story of Task Force Pineapple. This is a group of retired special operation guys who worked privately to rescue Afghan fighters and interpreters and citizens and their families. And they went to Afghanistan <laughs> to rescue these guys on their own. Not through the government. They're retired. They just did it. What? It started with one Afghan in particular. There was one Afghan citizen who worked with our special force guys. He worked with SEAL Team 6 for many years. And the Taliban was texting him threatening messages. We're going to kill you and all the rest. So these, these Americans who worked with him, they said, we got to go get him. In the end, there are 50 people who are in this encrypted chat text thing, right, who worked together to rescue him. They navigated through the dark streets of Kabul in the middle of the night from house to house, past Taliban checkpoints to smuggle him into the airport. And they were able to rescue him, right? They got him to the gates of the airport, smuggled him in. Now, like that's crazy. And then they said, well, let's keep going. Let's do it again. Task Force Pineapple, what we know of so far, has saved the lives of 630 people. Army Lieutenant Colonel Scott Mann, he's a retired Green Beret commander. He was one of the guys who led the team. He said this Herculean effort couldn't have been done without the unofficial heroes inside the airfield who defied their orders to not help beyond the airport perimeter, right? So the U.S. government officially told guys in the airport, do not help anyone outside of the airport, right? They defied their orders by wading into sewage canals and pulling in these targeted people who were flashing pineapples on their phones. So they're not only loyal and brave and sacrificial and all that, but then they have the skills. Imagine having the skills to be able to pull like something, something like that off. If you just drop me in the middle of Kabul and said, go, go rescue someone, I'd be like, no, no, I don't, what are you talking about? Rescue me. I don't, what, do you, what do you want me to do? These guys, through their lifetime of training, are able to do this. How awesome is that? Think about that. Think about the loyalty to be like, oh, I need to go do this. I need to save these people. The courage to say, I'm, I will, I'm going, or I'm, let's do it. And then the skills to say, I know what to do. The loyalty, courage, and skills, I, it's just unfathomable, truly. One of these guys who was angry, of course, that our government didn't do this. He says, well, we did what we should do as Americans. And that's what these guys always are, right? You talk to any World War II vet and you're like, wow, how could you have accomplished what you did? And they say, oh, we're just doing our job. And same thing with these special op guys. They're like, oh, I mean, like, this is what we do, we're Americans what we should do. <laughs> yeah, I know, but many of the Afghans arrived near Abbey Gate, waded through a sewage-choked canal towards a U.S. soldier wearing run red sunglasses to identify himself. They waved their phones with the pineapples and were scooped up and brought inside the wire to safety. How is that, how is that even a thing? This is a retired Green Beret who was a part of it. I've been involved in some of the most incredible missions and operations that a special forces guy could be a part of. And I've never been a part of anything more incredible than this. Now you look at this and it's unfathomable. It's unfathomable. But we all have a chance to do it. Not to go to Afghanistan, of course. You know, there's a hurricane going on right now in Louisiana. The Cajun Navy, they're gonna be deployed shortly, no doubt. What's the Cajun Navy? Just a bunch of guys. Just a bunch of guys with boats going from house to house rescuing people. That's what they do. They're not waiting for FEMA. They get to work now. Citizens rescuing people, not waiting for the government to come and help. And your community needs you too with whatever you can do. You have the loyalty. You have the courage. You have the skills. You have them. Maybe not to go to Afghanistan and rescue people through the Taliban choked streets of Kabul. Almost no one can do that. 
But you can do what you can do. You just have to decide to do it. And be inspired by these guys. And we have to do it. Because if we don't, who are we as a country? What do we do? Like, we have to figure this out. And I want to say this to our vets. You did not fail. You did not let anyone down. You did not. The system did. The men at the top did. The president did. You didn't fail anyone. Our leaders did. This is not on you. It's on them. You've been forced to take the brunt of it and feel the pain of it. And they feel none of it. They're immune from it all. 12 Marines have been killed. A Navy medic. One Marine's been fired for all this. One. He's the guy who made a viral video calling for accountability from our leaders. Those have been the casualties of this past week. Not one other Marine was fired. Not one general. Not one person from the State Department. No one at the top. You feel the pain. They're focused on the next election. Check out this picture right here. This is Corporal Hunter Lopez. His last act of service was carrying this young boy five miles on his shoulders to safety. I'd love to hear more from that little boy one day about the Marine who saved his life. The shirt, you guys put that up one more time. If you look at the little boy's shirt, it says, carry on. It says carry on. It's from, uh, it's a Pokemon t-shirt. It's carry on. Corporal Lopez literally carried this boy on his shoulders for five miles. And it's up to us to carry on the legacy of these Marines and their acts of service, and love, and loyalty, and courage, and skill. Wow. That was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.